Okay, well, welcome uh, back to the channel. So this video, no motorcycle stuff in it. Uh, this is a medical, kind of a medical update video. Uh, I'm still getting a lot of questions from people on the hyena hernia surgery and the Nissan fundification. Uh, so I just wanted to, you know, answer some questions that have turned up in some of the comments sections. Questions that have been asked more than once. So uh, I probably won't do another medical one till uh, maybe the middle of June, then I think that's going to be it for medical after June. Uh, I won't be doing any more updates after that. Uh, I'm already on my one year uh, CAT scan now for lung cancer, and my next one is in June, and I'll do an update after that. Uh, before I answer any kind of questions, uh, I need to do a disclaimer that I'm not a medical professional, I'm not a doctor, I'm not, I don't work in a hospital, I have nothing to do with medicine. Uh, these are strictly my uh, experiences and things that have happened to me in the surgeries and the you know aftercare of surgery and things like that so please don't ask me to recommend a doctor a hospital or even if you should get surgery uh, that's something that's you need to talk to your doctor about uh, I'm not going to give any advice on you know really anything I'm just kind of relaying to you after I had those surgeries what happened to me and the things that I experienced with it so so we got that out of the way. So um, I had the surgery back uh, last year in October, actually 2022 in October. Uh, that was the uh, Nissan fundification and hyena hernia. And I made a couple videos on that so far. So I'll answer some questions right now. I got some questions that I took through the comment section. So somebody asked me, uh, how long do you have to wait to start driving? Uh, I had to wait until I saw the doctor, uh, which was about a week after surgery. Uh, I could have driven, but, you know, I had incisions in me and everything like that. So my wife drove me for the first week. Uh, I don't think the doctor put any restrictions on me for driving. Uh, the lung cancer, there certainly was a restriction on me for driving. Uh, I just couldn't really do anything for like a month afterwards. So, So there was no real restrictions on me for driving, but again... It depends upon your surgery. I had robotic surgery. Uh, if you have, if you're not having robotic surgery, that might be a whole different ball game. So, you know, that's something that you know. Ask your doctor. It really depends on the type of surgery you have. So, so then another question was how your how was your swallowing? Well, my swallowing's fine. I never had an issue with swallowing. Uh, I did have another esophagram. I think that's how you pronounce it. Esophagram about two weeks ago because I was having problems. I was coughing again. Uh, my nose was like running and everything like that, which kind of led me to the lung cancer thing before. So I went to see the uh, physician's assistant in the thoracic department. She was the physician's assistant on the surgeon that did my lung cancer. And I was questioning for her if, you know, possibly that came back. She didn't, didn't think it did, but they wanted to uh, check uh, my reflexes and everything like that, my acid reflux. So I had that. There is a little bit of hesitation when I swallow uh, and I can feel that uh, if I'm eating something like steak or something like that I can feel it kind of building up in here because the fundification you know tightens that esophagus around it so uh, there was a question that maybe it was too tight uh, but if I slow down when I eat and I drink liquids when I'm eating it doesn't seem to be an issue it doesn't hurt uh, because somebody else asked me that I think in this uh uh, well, I'll, I'll, let me move on to that. And, it's, and it says, see, here's a question that I don't really want to answer. It says, can you suggest a way to get the surgery done? That That's something that you need to figure out with a hospital. I'm not going to recommend the hospital that I went to because you might not live anywhere close to where I where I live at. So, it, you know, talk to your doctor. Your doctor's going to know. He'll point you to the gastroenterologist uh, that'll deal with this stuff. Or in my case, it happened to be the same surgeon that did my lung cancer surgery. She did because she's an expert in, in robotics at the hospital, she does all the robotic surgery and the high end hernia and the fundamentation were robotic surgery. So, uh, so somebody else asked me, is it, did you do a manometry? I guess that's how you pronounce it. What results did it give you? I had ineffective motility. Okay, so uh, I have a motility study coming up at the end of May. This was all part of that thing when I talked to the, when I was getting the coughing and the physician's assistant, she scheduled me for the motility, and that's where they take a real thin tube and they snake it down your nose and your stomach, 
and they're measuring the stress that that uh, fundification does. I, I guess that's what it is. I, I, I'm assuming that's what they're doing. Uh, I actually thought that they had passed that on to my gastroenterologist, but she says, no, we're the ones that order that. My gastroenterologist, he's the head of that, and he also does the surgery, and he's going to be my surgeon. So, so uh, see, another question. It says, heard you say a bit of heartburn, but no mention of bloating. Uh, no, I didn't, ha I didn't really have any bloating. I didn't really have any after effects of the surgery at all, other than the diet, and I'll get into the diet uh, in a minute. Another question was overall, was the surgery a good choice? Uh, for me, it was because uh, it eliminated the acid reflux that I was having at night. Uh, I had to always sleep on my left-hand side. I had to use like one of those slanted pillows. Uh, and I was always, it was, sometimes it was going up into my sinuses at night and I'd wake up choking, coughing, and I'd have to sit up or stand up or get up for like a half an hour for it to all drain out of my sinuses. It was terrible. Uh, it was absolutely terrible. Now, when I went in for the surgery, uh, the doctors told me that there was an 80% success rate. So I knew that I could be in that 20% where it wasn't going to work. Uh, the problem that I had was when I went to the doctor this past time, before I saw the physician's assistant, I saw they wanted me to contact my primary. So I saw his physician's assistant and she was wanted to up my medication. Uh, which I don't want to do because I do have kidney disease, so I have to kind of watch the medication that I take. It doesn't affect my kidneys. Uh, so I have like four doctors, five doctors right now, and it's it's kind of like there's like too many people involved in this. Uh, I always have to run everything by my nephrologist, who's my kidney doctor, to make sure if there's any change to my medication, he'll, he can tell me, yeah, we can do it, or no, you shouldn't do that because it's going to affect your kidneys. So... Uh, but I didn't have any bloating. And the surgery for me uh, was a good choice for me. So then they also said, I just got referred to a surgeon, so I'm still weighing pros and cons. Uh, it, it really all depends on your situation. Um, that's why I said, you know, don't take any advice from anybody on YouTube or Facebook or Instagram or TikTok, even if they say they're a doctor. Talk to your primary care. Your primary care will... Uh, refer you to any kind of specialist you need, whether it's a gastroenterologist, whether it's pulmonary, whether it's nephrology. Uh, like my primary said, look, I'm not going to get involved in your care, your specialist care. I'm here just to help you move along. And he hasn't interfered in my care at all. I see several different specialists every time I go. So uh, that's my best advice is just talk to your doctor. I mean, you can listen to me, my experiences, but don't take my experiences to mean that same thing is going to happen to you. It all depends upon your body type, your, your medical history. It depends upon a lot of things. So don't rely on somebody else's experiences. Your doctor is going to know better than I'm certainly going to know if you should have a surgery or not. Uh, so somebody else asked, uh, are you able to burp? Yeah, I, I can. I never had an issue with that. Uh, and do you have difficulty eating solid foods? Uh, like I said, yeah, I did. Uh, and I still do. It still feels like it's sometimes it's built up right here. So the alternative to that, uh, when I talk to the physician's assistant, is to go in and have more surgery done and have them loosen that fundification. So that's out of the question. I'm not doing that. Uh, I'll just have to monitor how I eat, slow down when I eat, drink liquids when I eat. And if I do that, it generally, I generally don't have a problem. It's, it's when I'm not thinking about it. Maybe I'm sitting in front of the TV or something and I'm eating and I'm just kind of eating and not thinking about it. Then I can feel it kind of build up. Uh, in fact, during that esophagram, they had to stop the esophagram because the liquid, the barium they gave me to drink, wasn't going past the fundification. And the next part of that esophagram is when you lay down on the x-ray table. They had to wait about 10 minutes for it to pass through there before I could lay down and do it. So... Uh, says any strange feelings uh, in your abdominal area? Uh, I don't have any. Uh, hold on, let me shut my heater off. Okay, I I didn't have any strange feelings in my abdominal. Now, I do still have some residual effects of my lung cancer surgery. I still some places like right around here. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but it's on my left side where my left part, half of my left lung was taken out. Uh, I, it is still numb. And that's where they, they probably hit a nerve when they put the robotic arm in and all that other stuff. But 
the doctor said that might come back and it might just be like that forever, but it doesn't bother me. It doesn't hurt or anything like that. So I don't really have any abdominal issues with the hyena hernia surgery. Uh, and then they said, what stage with your hernia? Uh, as far as I know, there are no stages. It's They measure it in centimeters. And I believe mine was fairly small. I think it was three centimeters was mine. Uh, and then another person asked, I don't know why a fund application is necessary. I would think a hyena hernia repair would suffice. Well, there are actually two different surgeries. Uh, hyena hernia is when your stomach goes through your diaphragm. So what you have is you have your lungs, you have your diaphragm, and then you have your stomach. So the hyena hernia is part of your stomach is poking through your diaphragm. Uh, the fundification is actually your esophagus. That's where your esophagus comes down and meets your stomach. So they take that muscle and they kind of, they stitch it and tighten it the hyena hernia is actually poking through your diaphragm. So they have to push that back down and they stitch that. Uh, now it was just the, just the other day, uh, somebody asked me about how long these surgeries last. Average about 10 years. So in 10 years, I'll probably have to have this fundification done again because the stitches will wear out. That's a muscle that you use constantly. So there's a lot of stress on the stitches that they put in. Uh, same thing with the hyena hernia. There's a lot of stress going on there. So anywhere from seven to 10 years, they say you might have to have it redone. Some people never have to have it redone. Uh, so I don't know. I'll just have to wait and see 10 years from now what, you know, what the story is. So it says, somebody says, hi, I was wondering after eight weeks you had meatballs. Could you swallow easily without being stuck on the esophagus and did it, and didn't it cause back pain? I never had back pain when I feel like that food is getting caught at the fundification point. That, it doesn't hurt. It just feels, I can just feel like the food is not going down. But it goes down after a little bit. So, But I never had any back pain or any pain from it. So this person said that I had surgery three weeks ago and I tried to eat toast, but it felt like some bites were getting stuck and causing me back pain. Uh, it says, also, do you lift heavy things? I had the 180 wrap because I was afraid of the Nissan. So I don't know what the 180 wrap is. I don't, I guess it's just half of the fundification. I don't really know. Uh, I do lift heavy things. I couldn't off the, for the first, I think three months, I couldn't because they were worried about tearing the stitches. So I didn't for a good three or four months, but I think after that, I don't think I had a problem with it. Uh, and then somebody said, well, I'd like to know more about the diet. How long before everything gets back to normal? Uh, so the first couple of days, uh, the first day when I was in the hospital, I got released the next day. So I had the surgery in the morning. I spent the night in the hospital. They released me the next afternoon. I could only drink clear liquids the first, I think three days, three or four days. Uh, then I, they had said, scheduled me an appointment for a week after the surgery. A week after the surgery, I moved to soft foods. I could eat, you know, well, I could still eat soups in the beginning, but I could eat puddings and, and stuff like that. Um, so the first couple of days was basically just liquids. Anything you can drink, you could have. The second part of the thing was soft foods. And then you had like two months of, you couldn't eat things like peanuts or pretzels or steak or anything that was really hard. You could eat, you know, eggs and it was kind of a pain really. I mean, uh, you know, you get used to it, but that's just, you know, how it works. Cause they don't want to put stress on that, the stitches that they put in. So so it says from week two to eight, soft foods only, but your surgeon will tell you when you can switch over. Uh, let me see what I put down. It says first couple of days, clear liquids only, water, broth, jello, until your first appointment with your surgeon, usually a week after surgery, liquids only, basically anything you can drink there from two to eight weeks with soft food. So somebody said, uh, I was wondering if you'd still recommend this operation. I'm considering this operation. And there are a lot of comments about people struggling to swallow even after a year or two. And can you offer any advice on how bad this has been for you? Uh, it hasn't really been bad for me. Uh, like I said, it's never it's never been painful. Uh, I just know that you know if I feel it, I've got to kind of stop what I'm doing. Or the biggest thing I can say is eat slow. Don't eat fast. Now I'm in, I was always in the habit of never really drinking when I ate. Uh, now I have to kind of drink. I still don't drink a whole lot when I eat, but I just, I have to make a conscious effort now to drink while I'm eating. If I do that and I slow down, not an issue. It's only when I'm, I'm eating, if I eat kind of fast or if I'm eating like roast beef or steak or, you know, pork chops or something like that, that's kind of a heavy meat, then I can feel it kind of building up. So, but if you eat slow, 
uh, you know, make sure you chew your food away, drink liquids with it, and it, it's going to be fine. So let's see, uh, after you were diagnosed, how many endoscopes did you have? I've had three endoscopes. I've had two endoscopes, sorry. I, I forgot that the esophagram is not an endoscope. Um, let's see, it says, I've been diagnosed with high hernia and reflux in 2020. It's getting worse. Was put on three medications I'm taking now. Has been approved. Doctor is now suggesting surgery, but has not done any more scopes or tests since he first diagnosed me in 2020. Uh, my suggestion is, is that you get the test done before. If they're putting you on medication and it's not working, working, yeah, you probably would, you might want to think about the surgery. Uh, if I was only having heartburn, I wouldn't have had it done. Like I said, the main reason I want it done because when I slept at night, that acid reflux was going up into my throat. Now, part of the endoscope that I had, they also determined I had Barrett's esophagus. Uh, so Barrett's esophagus is when your acid reflux goes up into your, into your esophagus, your throat, and constant washing over your esophagus, it changes the cell structure. It changes it actually to intestinal cells. Now, because your throat was never, esophagus was never meant to handle acid reflux. It's hydrochloric acid. It was never meant to do that. So uh, one of the endoscopes I had last year uh, was I had an endoscope and they actually put a bee capsule. Uh, if I have a picture of it, I'll show you. It's a little small. It's not even the size of a dime. And they, it's a bee capsule. It's a transmitter. And they put it in my esophagus. And it just sticks on your esophagus wall by suction. It stays there for two or three days and it falls off and you pass it through. But I had to wear a monitor and every time I felt heartburn, I had to hit that monitor. So the gastroenterologist told me, yeah, you still got some acid reflux going up into your esophagus. It's not nearly as bad as it was. That's why he was kind of telling me that you're in that probably in that 20% range where the fundification is not 100% effective. Uh, but... The surgeon who did it said they don't really see any evidence of that. So this is what I mean by too many people involved in this process. Uh, you've got the people who do the surgery. You've got the people who are scheduling the surgery. And it's kind of conflicting on what they've been telling me. But I feel I feel fine. I, you know, I'm on the medication I'm on. I haven't increased my medication. Uh, I was on famotidine uh, to begin with. And then the gastroenterologist said, you know, after a couple of years of promoting, if you've been on it for a couple of years, it doesn't work. It's not effective anymore. So he took me off of that and he put me on a PPI. And I take that once a day and that's, it's been fine. So, all right. So I talked about the B capsule. Uh, I think that's it. I think that's all the questions. So, yeah, so that's, that, that's basically it. Uh, I did have a blood test today. Because uh, I'm seeing my nephrologist next week on my kidney problem. So uh, my kidney levels have stayed the same for the past two years. They haven't gone up. They haven't gone down. They'll never go up. You, you never get your kidney function back. It's always, it'll either stay the same or it'll go down. So basically cutting out almost all salt uh, kind of stopped that process. But uh, so that's uh, working out well. Uh, I have, uh, like I said, that... Uh, I forget what you call it. I don't have my phone on here, so I don't have the name of it. It's what, uh, I am going for another test in the end of May, and then I go for my one-year CAT scan in June, and then I'll meet with the thoracic surgeon in the middle of June. So I'll probably do another medical update at the end of June, uh, and I probably won't do any more. Uh, I don't see the point in doing these every year. Uh, I think I pretty much answered as many questions as I can answer on the surgery and the fundification. So... Uh, if you do have any questions, just leave it in this video below, and I'll try to answer them the best I can. But like I said, I'm not going to advise anybody on anything, doctors, hospitals, whether you have the surgery. That's something that you need to talk to your doctor about. So anyway, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.